Two weeks ago, I went to Mexico with my family. Um, I've been married 25 years, I have a busy work life, and my wife organises our life at home. Um, at work, I don't know where I am necessarily from day to day to day. I woke up this morning, I opened up the window, and I looked out, and I thought, Mark, you screwed up. <laughs> Why didn't you two get control of your family life and bring them here? and stay an extra week in Namibia. What a fantastic place for a conference. Um, I'm privileged to represent Ed Computing here. I will try not to make this presentation Ed Computing specific. I have made a presentation Africa specific because I do see a lot of um, cultures around Europe and the Middle East and I get the privilege to be able to see and compare the different ways people do things. Uh, and every time I come to Africa, I just go away with uh, a level of enthusiasm that, uh, that, that you know, carries me through the next few weeks. And, and that's what I've seen at this conference. There's, there's just an unbelievable energy and enthusiasm. And what this presentation lends itself to is some of the first presentations on the opening evening from um, the, the keynote speakers. And I've tried to pick up on some of the things that I, I listened to and I saw and played them back. And this presentation kind of lends itself to the theme of innovation by Africa. So, the first thing I learned in the presentation was uh, that I should bring my credit card to Namibia. <laughs> the Prime Minister said that I must see the country, so I have to do that before I leave, and uh, I will spend some money, and I've told my team to do that. Um, in my presentation, there will be uh, about seven quick examples of where we've uh, been working with people uh, in different communities around different African regions. Um, but first, I wanted to roll a video that uh, actually says it in the words of, of people that are using our technologies and what their real life experiences are with this technology. around 66 conferences to one train somewhere. 
we need uh, a saving of around 47%, which is equivalent to around 20,000 US dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the computing team and uh, for this technology that uh, you brought our way. We are happy to be a part of this. Some of the things people are saying there, you know, chalk to computers, analog to digital, more motivated. I mean, this, these are inspiring things. And, uh, you know, we're really proud. We've been in the um, African continent for more than six years. And we've done some really interesting projects all over the place. But when I say we, I mean you. Um, we, we work through local partners, and they're taking the technology, and they're using it, and they uh, I think uh, the Prime Minister talked about the ability of someone to change a light bulb. And, uh, you know, the, these, these computers need technicians, and the technicians are local technicians. And, uh, you know, we're proud to help them grow their business um, and grow themselves. So, one of the projects we were involved in was a very, very remote school. Um, there were no computers uh, in or around this region in, uh, in the Eastern Cape. And, and there was, in, in the project, the, uh, the idea was that these kids uh, would have no computer or ICT knowledge. Uh, again, I go back to the, uh, the, the, the keynote presentation, it's the same sort of experience about well, what and how will these kids work. Well, we took the um, view that you needed some, uh, you know, the, the facility, facility needed to be there, not just for the school, but for the community as well. So the building was put outside the school. Um, it did have uh, an ability to offer services around airtime and, and printing for the local community. Uh, but the interesting thing is, inside, inside this room, we put um, ICT managers and helpers to guide the kids. Um, what do you think happened? Day one, every child who came in here, every student, already had a Facebook page. <coughs> They've done them on their feature phones. Okay, they came in. Uh, they just didn't need any ICT help. They sat down in front of the computer for the first time. They surfed the web. They just did it. They worked uh, in little groups. They asked their colleagues for help. They didn't ask the person behind them. They just could do it. And I thought that was a nice sort of local example. I heard the keynote. These slides were adapted until about 2 o'clock this morning because I was trying to reflect uh, some of the other speeches. So uh, I thought that was a nice local example of that uh, project that was done in India. This is in a very remote region of, um, of Kenya, in the Rift Valley, uh, Leutemann Rock. That building, um, you know, there is no power, no facility, nothing in that region. Uh, this building was transformed by local engineers, turning it into a, you know, from a kind of a shed, cow shed, into a classroom. On the roof there you see the solar power um, <coughs> panels. Inside there's a lot of technology. And what they've transformed this building into is a classroom using uh, low power devices from, from, from our business. So again, it's a lovely story. It's the innovation in Africa. We didn't do it. The local guys took um, you know, modest funds to create this environment for 20 children to be taught um, day on day on day. Another project, Hazy View, you may or may not be aware of this one. This is a uh, funded project sponsored by T-Systems. Our partner in South Africa, Ms. Tech, was very, very instrumental in taking part in this project. Uh, inside this community, it was for adults and it was for kids to learn. Quite a funky learning environment. Uh, mobility and, in fact, that's a learning tree that's got all, all, all bits of old PCs inside it. But sure, they also have a classic learning ICT lab, because that's the way kids um, can get information and can, can reach information. And they also have 
I excuse uh, that lady, the, the granny clown, do you remember that? The lady at the back, so you can see the child knows what she's doing, and I think the lady's looking and learning from what the child's doing. I thought that was kind of a reflective of what we heard before. So, um, there was also a fantastic presentation from, from Matt Jordan, what an inspiring young man, uh, the blogger from Ghana. And I thought, well, uh, all these apps that's being set up in Africa by Africans for the mobile world, you know, where are they doing that? This looks, you know, uh, kind of a, it's a modest lab, um, and it doesn't look particularly exciting. What are they doing there? Well, these labs are actually used for computer studies, and the students are learning how to program. They're learning to make those mobile apps. Um, the interesting thing is, you know, to make programs, you have to use compute power. And everyone thinks that takes a lot of power and energy, and, and you need big, expensive machines. But honestly, this, uh, this 30 years of lab is using some of that technology that is, is two or three generations old in, in, in our terms. Um, and they're, using, you know, they're just using a PC as a PC host. So the PC is being shared by the first of our devices. And these guys um, are in that modest environment that creates a new app for Africa. So I thought that was a, a, a nice example as well. Um, Sweetwater's lab. This is uh, more African innovation. Uh, shipping containers. Two of them cut out the middle line, join them together to make a bigger classroom. Okay. Now this one does need power. It's not solar powered. Interesting. The lab was deployed with 40 standard PCs. And what happened? Four weeks after the, uh, the lab had been uh, implemented, the school got its electricity bill. The electricity bill was 1,000 rand a month more than they had expected from their normal bill. And what had to happen? They had to shut the lab down. Well, that's what they thought they needed to do. Mustek stepped in, they paid the bill, and they didn't want to keep paying the bill. So what they did, they took the PCs away, or left one of them, and they put in an end computing solution. And that brought the monthly bill down to around 500 grand. And they could afford that, so the lab lives on, and the kids can learn. I'll throw this one in, it's just a, it's just a picture. It's, it's a sort of a, um, quite an quite a, uh, exclusive school, uh, you know, one of the top five schools. But it was more to do with the layout. Um, I've shown you lots of pictures of labs and classrooms where people are sitting in lines. Uh, this one, you know, they're in a more uh, a friendly environment, maybe, just thinking about classroom layout to encourage these kids to talk and, and work and learn with each other. It's just kind of a picture to show you what uh, you, you might want to think about setting these things up. So I've shown you lots of pictures. Um, you may or may not be aware that running up to this uh, conference, we also put out a small classroom in a block competition. Well, it wasn't a competition, it was just uh, the competition was get your entry in. Okay, because you get your entry in, then you can win something. But the competition, you know, for me it was an online competition because um, to register, if you went to this show, you had to register your school through technology. Okay? So you register online, put your name and school's uh, name in to get into the project. So, how many schools actually applied? And where did they come from? I thought this was really fascinating. This shows, across Africa, all the countries that applied for this classroom in the box. There's around 26 um, countries that, that signed up. And in some countries, you've got more than 50 applicants, you know, they're really enthusiastic about technology. And you might not be surprised about the, where, where the different uh, uh, sort of main hubs are. It's maybe where computing is more strong, or where, you know, there's uh, bloggers, or, you know, a lot of online activity. But, um, for me, it was quite thrilling to see the breadth of coverage of ICT in Africa. So, um, I'm just delighted that, uh, that it had that impact. And of course there has to be a winner, and I thought I'd take this quick opportunity to say who that is. And I hope... <coughs> yes, um, Simon Pierce, he drew it last night. It was the first time I've seen it. University of Botswana, they are the lucky owners of a new end computing lab. I don't know if anyone's uh, in the room from that university, but... Good luck and you can see it here. Right. There's a happy man, I see some smiling faces. So uh, you come and see me afterwards.
So that's it. I'm on track. This is my last slide. I just wanted to say, this, this picture is in Rwanda. This is a reality. On the top right, you can see PCs. They're, they're old, they're not very sexy. Uh, they're not being used. They couldn't be used because they kept breaking down. Uh, we took one of those machines and we put them on the left-hand side of the room. And we put in some devices for these guys and they can learn. And that's a, that's a real classroom in you know, the real world uh, in you know, two months ago. So this is the environment we are working in. Uh, so I'm proud of what we've done in this, uh, in this region. I'm, I'm inspired by everything I've heard at this conference and uh, I really am excited about what we can do together in the future. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh...